What up and welcome to the coffee shop, everybody. This is your host and barista, Eric. And today we are drawing trend lines, you know, so you can get into good trades and make big moves. So you know what to do. Like this video if you didn't do it already and subscribe to the channel if you are not currently following. So go ahead, pull up a chair and sit down with me at the coffee shop. As the video states, everybody, this is drawing trend lines, right? So there's been a number of questions of how do you do them the appropriate way, right? Because I've already shown you guys what to look for when you're looking to draw your support and resistance levels. And when you get used to what price action looks like, you can draw your support and resistance levels as quickly as this. All right. And I'm just kind of doing it while I'm talking to you. Price moves down, gets stuck right here. Okay. This is another little move right there. Now, if I take a look to the right, I can see that these support and resistance levels are still being respected for the most part. Now, you can see how inaccurate they are, right? I told you in the previous video, support and resistance levels are not meant to be perfect. And that is the same rule for trend lines. So I don't want you guys to get too hung up on all of the perfection related to trend lines. Don't overthink it. And I gave you guys the task of practicing support and resistance levels, and I hope you've been doing it. Let's get into trend lines, right? Now you're going to see a little person on my screen right here, right? This, this is you. Okay. And this is you on your price moving up or moving down. So I want to answer a couple of questions for you guys. All right. And I'll put that back in a minute. I want to answer a couple of questions for you guys. The question number one was, how do I know which side of the price to draw my trend line on, right? And that is very easy. So you see price is in a downtrend here, right? Now you want your trend line to be on the right side of your price. It's easy to say that, but then all of a sudden you drew it here on the right side of the price. But here it is all of a sudden, it's on the left side of your price. Now what do you do? Well, we'll get to that, okay? Now, that's in a downtrend, right? Well, what happens in an uptrend? Again, you are only drawing your trend line on the right side of your price. That's it. Now, how do I know that this is accurate? I don't know it's accurate. That's the point. Do not get hung up on the accuracy of your trend line. Just make sure that you use the same method every time. However, your trend line is going to be a very key indicator of when certain things are happening when you get to support and resistance levels. Okay. It's a very key indicator. We'll cover that when I go into a trading analysis uh, video of using trend lines with support and resistance trading with no indicators, simply using support resistance and trend lines. All right. So let's get into how we draw a trend line. Doing this the easy way, you are not going to use an indicator, but what you should use is a 50 period moving average and a 200 period moving average. My 200 is red. My 50 is yellow. What you are looking for is you're obviously looking for your 50 to be above your 200. This means you are in an uptrend, right? Now you see price doesn't really move too far at this point, but I'm going to show you what you're supposed to be doing anyway. Okay. You have a crossover of your 50 and your 200. So what are you looking for in an uptrend? You are looking for the low. Okay. And you are looking for the next low. You want two lows. That's all you really need is two lows in an uptrend. You need two lows because you're trying to support your price. Okay. Price keeps moving towards the trend line, right? So it needs something underneath it. When there's something underneath your price, you are trying to catch the lows. That's why you're looking for your lows. All right. You have your crossover of your 50 and your 200. This means generally you are in an uptrend. Now, even if price, don't worry, it's still kind of glazing down just a little bit. Don't worry. It's not a downtrend per se until you have a crossover again. So again, here's your crossover. You want your first low before the crossover and you want the first low after the crossover. Here's the low right there. Draw a line straight through it. I'm going to use the extend right feature. What happens if your price breaks below your 50 and it breaks below your 200? 
This is a retest of the 200. What you want is you can pretend that this was a crossover, but I don't do anything here. There is another method that says you take your, you see where price crosses the 50 uh, and the 200, you, where it crosses both, not crosses one and then crosses back again. You want where it crosses both, all right? This method says that where it crosses both, you look at the low and the low after, the low before and the low after. I don't like this method because it gives you a channel. So I want to make sure that you guys do not use this method. It becomes very complicated and you can see the benefit of doing it. It gives you this nice little shift channel, okay? That if you ever get below this area, you are obviously in a true downtrend, okay? And it's kind of strange because all I did was I marked these two candles and several days later, price respected this area. Here's an obvious downtrend, okay? I do not want you to follow that method, all right? So if you find that method online, don't worry about it. And I'm intentionally showing you this part in the uh, trend because I want you to see where it can get confusing and what do you do? As I said in the beginning, follow one method, stick to that method and practice that method. So you have a crossover of your 50 and your 200. You find the first low beforehand. Here's the crossover. Here's the low, okay? Now, here's the crossover. You want the first low afterwards. Here's your low. There, that's it. Intersect the open of both of those candles and just draw a trend line out. That's it. So now you have your trend line. In this particular case in the market, you drew your trend line, but you weren't able to actually take any long trades until after you broke the trend line. Or you can break above your 50 and trade to your trend line because your trend line is a dynamic area of support and resistance that changes price value as it exists. That being said, you can also see how price did respect it. I simply connected these two areas, right, for an uptrend. And you see price came down and tested it, came down, tested it, came up, broke above it, tested it from on top, okay? I didn't draw all of this. I just connected two candles way in the beginning. Price came up, tested it again, and went up, and finally broke through it, and so did your EMA. And that was, that began the downtrend. Drawing your trend line, you draw it on the right side of your price, across your low before the crossover, and the low after the crossover. You can see plainly that I am on the right side of the price. I drew it here, that's it. This is all I drew. Now. Let's go to a downtrend, right? Let's take a look at that right here. Now, what I want to see again is where, where do my moving averages cross over each other? They crossed over here, okay? Immediately when they cross over, you do not need to be in the trade. You're still waiting for the momentum to shift, all right? So you have plenty of time. Even on a one minute chart, you have plenty of time. When this crossover takes place, you could still have, oh, I don't know, you could still have eight minutes or less, you know, eight minutes or more to actually make your decision of what you want to do. But you still have to wait for a retest, which could take a half an hour. You have a crossover here, right? Here's your crossover. You have a high right there, okay? And you have the next high, which is it's right after the crossover, right there. You can see it, okay? It's right after the crossover. Now, if I, oh, look at that, it doubled up. So if I take these two highs and connect them, they should intersect this or dissect this. And if I look at my RSI, this is probably overbought. So let's just try and intersect these two right here. Here's a high. Here's the other high. I'm just doing this right there. And you can see how this ends up being above, right? Let's see what the RSI says. Yep. This was just a little manipulation, but it's in a non-tradable area. So it's just a move to the upside, but volume is still to the downside. No big deal. Now, again, I'm doing this without using any indicators. All I'm using is a 50, any 200 period moving average. That's it. So drawing again on my, <clears throat> my high before the crossover and my high after the crossover, just connect those two lines. Now, there's a third question that will come up. What do I do when my price crosses above my trend, my trend line? Well, look at your moving averages. 
if they're still far apart from each other and the price never crosses above the fast one, if it never crosses over the fast one, then you have nothing to worry about. Because look here, it tests off of it. Stay in this short trade. Now it's testing the moving average. It comes down. It tests the moving average. It keeps coming down. Now you have a break. Oh, this is called a break of structure. Okay. You don't have a lower low and you don't have a lower high. It crosses above your 50. It's moving away from your trend line and it has it broke across the 50 and it's getting stuck. So it's probably getting stuck on a 100 period moving average because it looks like about halfway in between these two until finally it comes down again. So this tells you that you have a high here, which is higher than your previous high. So now you need a new trend line, right? You have a high, a new high that's higher than your previous and you need a new trend line. So now you need to wait for another one. So here's your new high, right? You need another high after this. You can see it comes down, then it comes up again. So draw a line right there. Now you need your price to fall below that and fall below your 50. Well, it's still kind of ranging a little bit, does its thing, and then finally it crosses below the 50 and then it crosses below the trend line. So this is where you would enter, okay? This is where you would enter. You don't want your trend line in between your moving averages. You want your trend line outside the moving averages. This would have been your entry. Now, a lot of people will look at their charts and they'll say, hey, now I know why I've been failing at my trades because I've been entering too soon, right? So you have a trend here. There's actually three trends here, okay? I'm gonna remove this one because you can see where this one is. Let's put this here. You can see where this one is, right? This is a short term trend. It gets you into the move, but then there is another high. Look what happens. Here's a high higher than the previous high and it touches the 50. What did I say before about when it touches the 50? You need a new trend line. So here's your most recent one. Go through your new one. Just draw a line. There you go. Oh, look at that. It touched the 50 again. Let's line up a little bit right there. Let's line up now. Nowhere else did it touch the 50 again until it got here and massively dropped down, right? Every time it touches the 50, you draw two new points on your trend line here and here. Okay, that's it. So that's how you draw trend lines. And you can see what I mean about them being dynamic because here you actually have four different trends taking place. But the point is, let me go all the way back to the now time, right? Let's get back to now. Here we are in the now, right? Uh, I have a touch on my 50 and my 200 here and here, right? Let's say here, uh, right here. And oops, there's my low and here's my other low right there. There is my trend right there. Now, what's the purpose of this? Well, when you drop down to a small time frame, okay? you can see whether you should be trading to the upside or to the downside. So draw your trend lines, draw your support and resistance. And when you drop down to your trading time frame, you can see exactly when you should be in a uptrend or a downtrend. For example, here, this would have been a move to the upside because you came down and you touched the 50. Then you broke above the 50. You could have entered here found your low, right? This is why these trend lines are so important. And here is your trend line. It is a period or a point of resistance. You simply trade all the way back to it. Okay. Had I looked at the RSI formula at this point, it says go to, um, what it's a 6.45. Okay. So that is a one to 2.45. What does that say? One to 2.43. Okay. Let's go one to 2.45. I get 2.5, whatever, 2.43 right there. Okay. And I just, just tried this and it still came out with the RSI formula wins every single time right there. So support and resistance levels are very important. Draw them trend lines. I want you to practice them. If you want me to go into a little bit more detail about how to make sure you're getting them the right way, go ahead, ask in the comments and I'll make an example for you later peeps.
All right, guys, so there you see how easy it is to draw trend lines. I went into a little bit of depth with it to show you exactly what is the purpose of these trend lines and how they can save you or keep you in your trades. All right, so uh, go ahead, rewatch this video, play it back as many times as you need to. And of course, share it, like it, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And I hope I gave you something a little bit more than what the average video gives you about trend lines. All right, so always hit me on trading view always hit me here on youtube and yes some of you may have seen that message there will be a website coming soon so peace out and uh i will see you all next time at the coffee shop